Thanks to everybody for coming. Um, can I get a motion to open the meeting, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Please rise and uh, join me at the pledge. Good evening again. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to turn it over now to uh, our superintendent, Ms. Tolman. Thank you, Vice President Savino. Welcome, everyone. Uh, so tonight, we're going to start off with a presentation from Chris Glavitz from Tetra Tech, our architect, and Lou Rodriguez from Palumbo Group, our project manager, managers about the district's capital project. So I'll turn it over to Chris and Lou. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thanks, Christine. Um, we have, my name's Christopher Glaubitz. Uh-oh, I touched the cord. There it is. My name's Christopher Glaubitz. I'm with Tetra Tech Architects and Engineers. Uh, we're working with Lou Rodriguez and the Palumbo Group um, and have had the pleasure of doing so for the last couple years to help you prepare for your capital project referendum and complete some of the capital projects some of which are complete and some of which are ongoing. So we'll give you a status update on where things stand. Quick overview, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the budget, give a quick summary of that, talk about the timeline, go through what construction has been completed, what's under construction, what's ongoing. I know if, you, if you've driven past the middle school, you might have a little agita about that paving you know, happening, but a lot happens in the last couple weeks of summer, and uh, the contractors are, are working diligently out there. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about future construction as well. This is a slide of the estimates and the, and the capital project plan that was presented to voters before the vote. Okay, so this was kind of represented the planning uh, that, that, that budgeted for the close to $54 million referendum that the voters uh, did approve. This is an updated summary slide um, that shows some of the different packages that we have structured that capital project work into. Um, the early, what we call the early package, which was some roofing work that we were able to do more quickly, uh, is complete. The phase one package, which had a lot of work in the high school in this building, is almost complete. Uh, the phase, phase two, what we're calling that work, um, we ended up splitting it into two pieces, and I'll talk a little bit about why. So phase two A is under construction right now. They're really working on that, trying to get get uh, the demolition and the new work done at Fulmer Road, Austin, and Falls Building. Phase 2B pushed off a little bit. Uh, you may have heard in the news that there are supply chain issues, right? Anybody heard about that in the last couple years? Construction managers have to deal with that every day. So knowing that we were about to bid that work, we were trying to be smarter about some of the, the equipment, mostly mechanical equipment that we knew had very long lead times. Um, and, and breaking it up so that we uh, could anticipate that. So that's 2B that we're going to bid soon. Phase three is a smaller project that includes some uh, carpet, three, what we call a re-carpet at your synthetic turf uh, stadium, the original one. Um, there's also a little piece of what we call smart bond work, which adds security cameras and door uh, security improvements district-wide. So this shows, you know, with, um, with the estimates that, that Lou has, has provided and combined with the bids that we've received already and what we, what we call construction contingencies because you always you take a wall apart and you discover things. So we budget for all that and we're in a really good place. Um, Lou, if you want to talk more about the bids that we've received, we've gotten good competitive bids. Um, if anything you feel like we need to add uh, to that. No, you're good.
next slide was just going to touch on schedule. So as I mentioned, the early package uh, is complete. Uh, it, it included a bunch of roofing work as well as adding uh, those new lights out at your stadium field, those new LED uh, athletic lighting. Thank you. That looks great. I'm going to keep my distance, I think, and just use my, use my outside voice so I don't mess it up again. Um, so you'll see that sort of the vertical bar there toward the right uh, is kind of where we are in time. So the early package is done. The phase one work, we're just cleaning up the last little pieces of that. We should be uh, wrapping that up soon. Phase 2A is really what, what we're hot and heavy on at the moment in terms of construction. Phase 2B, we're going to bid soon, this fall, um, in anticipation of starting construction next summer for that. We did also break out what we call an HVAC co-op, so that's so that we can order some of that uh, mechanical equipment, the chiller for the middle school, some air handling units, other mechanical equipment that is uh, 20, 30, 40 week lead time plus very long lead times to order this equipment. So we want to do that proactively so that when the summer rolls around, we have that in hand and we can turn it over to contractors to install. Uh, so trying to be proactive and, and think a little bit differently about how we get capital projects done successfully in this really tough uh, construction environment right now. Um, and then phase three, I mentioned that's uh, about to go out to bid. We just received SEB approval for that. Uh, just two days ago, so we're we're looking to get that get that bid and get that work um, underway. And then I mentioned the smart bond work, which is cameras and card readers. So there's a lot of pieces moving right now, and we're we're moving through and completing work. Uh, so just you know, a couple pictures because it's good to see you know with all this all this work and all the um, the time that's gone into it and the approvals that the community gave to to actually see the benefits of all that. So Roofing is not particularly exciting, but it keeps keeps you know your students dry and, and everything, uh, the infrastructure up going, and that's a, that's a big piece of what the capital projects uh, help the district do. Um, and here's a picture of your new stadium lighting. So maybe you've enjoyed a game out there at night and and enjoyed that lighting. So phase one, this is the scope from the referendum. So you know we've talked we've looked at this slide a lot of times, and this is the before shot. You know, so when we were planning and. Uh, Mr. Favaro was in on that, and, uh, and some other board members, as we as we identified those needs that were most important for the district. Um, so, you know, the science rooms have been redone. Uh, so here's a couple pictures of, of uh, some of those completed spaces. The music suites, the band room, and the choral room uh, were redone as well. The STEM suite is up and running, so students have we're in there as of last September as well, um, taking advantage of, of updated learning spaces. And the library, which was scheduled to, to complete a little bit later just because of the size of it, uh, is also, also up and running. So we're really excited when we can turn over spaces uh, to the district and, and have students learning in them. Of course, the, the turf field, uh, if you've driven past, you know, between the middle school and high school, you, you drove right past this. And uh, students have been on that, practicing, playing. So now that leads us to a couple of the pieces for phase one, and I'm going to turn it over to Lou for a minute to say a couple words just about where we stand on the pieces that were always scheduled to be done this summer. Hey now, we got it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so you know, when you're looking at the work that we're, what, that's happening right now is we're really finishing uh, a lot of phase one work that was supposed to be completed this summer. Um, the, uh, the photos that you're seeing right now are in front of the middle school. Uh, substantial amount of work. Uh, it's all new circulation, parking, stormwater containment. So there's all new stormwater that's built into this, uh, this plan. And uh, uh, when you also see curbs, uh, sidewalks, um, significant amount of work that's that's happening, and we will be uh, sliding into home <laughs> right before uh, the kids get the uh, the kids get here. So, but once you realize the new circulation parking, it's going to be pretty impressive, and it's we've added parking on the side of the middle school as well. That's uh, uh, 
uh, that's facing the uh, new sports field. If you want to, you have to. So these pictures are uh, again. Uh, it's showing. This is showing your new sports field, synthetic field that's going to be on the side of the middle school, and uh, soccer, and there's also parking there as well. So the expanded parking uh, for the sports program, and uh, also for for the building itself. And these are all you know. Uh, shots from the uh, from the roof, but you 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 see we're touching every aspect of this site. <laughs> there, everything around the building's been touched, um, inclusive. What's not shown here, you know, the water tank we pulled out uh, a huge water tank um, out of the uh, front of the building. That's you know we're doing a new uh, water treatment uh, project, and it, it's going to be pretty special. When it's completed, uh, so pretty excited about it. But again, I know, uh, like Chris said earlier, uh, parents are going to be a little excited about what's happening. Are we, are we going to be done? We're going to be right there to the last minute. Uh, paving's going to be happening uh, starting in the next week or so. So you're going to really see things start uh, to come together uh, with the with the site work. You took out the uh, other pictures. We'll, we'll get to that oh, okay. Um, yeah. So phase two A, which is this uh, work at the at the Austin Road, Fulmer, and Falls building, um, includes improvements mostly to the the library media center. We're doing that through district wide, uh, as well as security improvements at the front entrance. So those are the two big pieces. We're also going through and doing some infrastructure stuff to include uh, to improve fire alarm, PA systems. Um, So these, uh, the libraries um, were to be uh, demoed, uh, gutted this, this summer. So they're demolished and ready for new, uh, you know, new finishes. Uh, a lot of the finishes, of course, we, again, because of the uh, material supply deliveries, whatnot, we're, we're going to be working in second shift during the fall uh, to complete this. Uh, per contract, these spaces were always scheduled to be completed by the end of October. So right now we're still on schedule to have these uh, spaces completed by the end of October. Um, by design, we knew uh, we couldn't have the materials here, but we did all any asbestos abatement work that was required. All of the messy work that was taken, you know, that was required was taken care of. So really, second shift, it's, it's now coming back and, and putting in New finishes at, at, the, uh, at the at the libraries, and again, they're going to be uh, pretty special when when they're uh, completed. You mentioned the security capacity and the schedule on that. Yeah, so uh, another big part of the projects are the security vestibules. The security vestibules, when we bid the work, um, were supposed to be completed in the summer of 2023, and again, um, when you look at the hardening. Uh, requirements of the uh, of those doors, the window fronts, and whatnot. We we on purpose uh, put that to the summer of 2023. Uh, we did talk about trying to expedite that work and see if we can get some of that work done this summer, and we just couldn't get the materials. But again, 
the contractors, the way the, the schedule was purchased from them, uh, they will be back uh, in the summer of 2023 to, uh, to, do, to do that work. Uh, we also have the uh, uh, elevator addition. The elevator addition is going to be something that, uh, I, I, you know, again, is, uh, we push that into the, the fall, winter of 2022. And um, we're still on schedule to, uh, to have that work completed as well. So, so one, of the, one of the other projects that I didn't have on the, on the previous list is an energy performance contract. The way those are structured, they, uh, they kind of pay for themselves uh, through the energy savings that you achieve through them. So that's ongoing as well. Uh, they're finishing that up. Uh, there are a couple pieces outstanding. Uh, there's a photovoltaic system on the roof at, at Lakeview Elementary that is ready to go. It's waiting for uh, some parts with chips, computer chips, if you've you know, heard about that supply chain issue. Uh, we're running into that. Also, there's a electrical transformer that um, I think paid for in October that NYSEG is going to deliver at some point. We don't know when. but So there's a couple pieces that we're looking at there. Um, finish those up. Um, I think we talked about the phase one items, the synthetic turf field. Uh, that's looking like early fall. Uh, the site contractors are really focusing on that front area to get that back online. The middle school entrance traffic we talked about, and we're hopeful that that will not only improve safety for students getting into that, but you know, if you're a parent here and you're coming off Myrtle Road or you're coming up here, there's it, it's crazy in the morning. So hopefully that traffic flow will will be a little bit better um, in in the front of the middle school there. Um, and we talked mentioned the main campus water, so the High school well uh, is still supplying water to this this campus, the three buildings on this campus. Uh, but you'll see a lovely new water tank, tens and tens of thousands of gallons there for water storage, as well as a little building there that has pumps in it um, and filtration equipment, uh, so that the water quality will be improved over, you know, especially what's been experienced in the middle school over recent years, that salty taste. Um, and and so we're excited to. the water truck out front, that's because we're switching over that water supply right now. The contractors are really working uh, very hard right now to get that get that switched over and, and that'll be done by the start of school. Right? Yes, it will. Uh, we talked mostly about phase 2A stuff as well already. I'll just give a preview for phase 2B. So Lakeview Elementary School will be receiving some of the mechanical upgrades, but also some renovations to their library space, some improvements to the security vestibule, some improvements to the nurse suite, uh, just to, to modernize that area, as well as a couple areas uh, for OTPT, it's school psychologists, um, and then up where the, where the girls' locker room used to be next to the gym, uh, providing some small group instruction spaces um, for the school as well. So some, some renovations around adding air conditioning to the, the cafeteria. So that's the space that was identified early on as, as we were trying to identify at least one large space at each school for cooling. At the middle school, we have some renovations as well in the, the library media center upstairs. Uh, the planetarium will be, will be renovated into a, a large group instruction space. So we're getting some, some more instruction uh, back there with some tiered seating. Uh, STEM classroom upgrades, as well as the kitchen serving area to improve that, that flow there, because that's, that's quite a bottleneck when, when it's time to feed the kids. Uh, so those are the main pieces of the middle school. Uh, phase three I mentioned is replacing the turf. So that's really just the, the carpet, um, not going all the way down, because a lot of that, that material is still in good shape, uh, but also resurfacing the track. Okay, so there'll be some, some upgrades to that. Mostly just things, you know, aging out. They've lived their useful life, uh, and they're they're ready to be replaced. Um, and I'll just mention that this was not part of the original program, but we were able to add this work in because of the the good bids that we got and the and the good performance that we've seen from contractors and the estimating from from Lou and his group as well. To, to, so we have a little space there. Um, the smart bond work uh, is. Um, that's at all the buildings. Uh, so we just had a good meeting today with building leadership, uh, going through building by building to just confirm those locations and make sure that uh, 
uh, that the cameras and the and the swipe cards and stuff are going to be in the in the best locations for them. So that will be coming up soon. We're we're trying to finalize that contract right now. So any any questions? Yeah, I don't know if I'm if I'm leading or if you guys want to. some upgrades to that, uh, some mechanical system upgrades and electrical upgrades as part of phase one. Um, there have been a number of conversations about uh, the age of that building and the, and the clear height inside, how high you can get those buses up, uh, considering how much to invest in that building before building a new one. So that's a larger conversation that, that we talked about in the planning that uh, Dave and others might remember, um, but also to improve the exhaust uh, for the folks that work in there, okay. um, get an exhaust system in there, um, okay. and improve the heat in there. Ongoing about that. I'm sorry? There is discussion on getting that done, or? No, that, so the, the ventilation, the heating, that is complete. Okay. There's an ongoing discussion about how much to invest in that building before building a new building. That's a larger, much larger Uh, the general fund budget is, has one lift scheduled for this year, and then we're looking to um, include that money in next year's budget to get the second lift. And I just want to also thank Chris and Lou for their work. Uh, Christina Howe is here with us this evening. She's our new uh, interim assistant superintendent for business, and um, she's been uh, working very hard, very closely. With Chris Lou, we have uh, regular meetings to keep us all in the loop. And um, it's a lot of moving parts, and we're real happy with the work that's being done. And we're looking forward to the first day of school when we slide into home and see uh, everything come to fruition. So, uh, and I want to thank the uh, employees, the 12 month employees that are here at the, fall, at the fall school, the high school, the middle school for their patience this summer. There's a lot of work going on, and in transportation as well. Um, there hasn't been running water from time to time in those locations, and it's been a challenge. Um, but the, the fruits of that challenge are coming uh, into uh, the final stages, and, and within the next week or two, all the water will be back on, and we'll have a much better system. So we appreciate everyone's patience. It was definitely a challenge in a hot summer, and we did have uh, alternate arrangements, which are not always uh, the easiest uh, during the summer to get to. So thank you to everyone. And, and just to add one more item, and uh, Chris and Lou touched upon it, that the early package and phase one have come in under budget. And so we do have some unencumbered funds at this point that are uh, preliminary numbers. And as we go through the remainder of the project, they, we are hopeful um, that we'll have some money left over at the end of the project so that the board and administration can work together to identify other items that can be added in that are, are needed throughout the district. Uh, but again, as was mentioned, there are supply chain issues and there are some um, cost issues, increased costs from things that might have been budgeted originally. So we're just going to keep an eye on that. And we look forward to having another update uh, in maybe about six months or so and let us know where we are. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks, Thanks guys. Tonight we're going to be reviewing the district-wide safety plan uh, and open up for comments uh, for 30 days. At this time, uh, Superintendent Tona will be, uh, give you a brief overview. You may find the presentation and a more detailed overview and the submission for comments on our district clerk's page. And I would like to turn it back over to uh, Ms. Tona. Thank you very much, uh, Vice President Savino. All right.
So um, annually, schools across New York State must present a district-wide safety plan to the Board of Education for adoption. So there is a public hearing involved. So tonight is that public hearing. I'm just going to briefly give you a summary about this plan. Um, it is uh, an overview plan. It does not get into the specifics. There are additional plans for each of our buildings, but for uh, safety reasons, those are not disclosed to the public. So um, every year, these plans are, are reviewed. We have a, a safety team in the district that reviews. We share the plans with our, the education department, as well as our local responders, the New York State Police Department, Town of Carmel Police. And um, like I mentioned, this plan tonight can be shared publicly, but those specific building plans cannot. So I'd like to thank the District Health and Safety Committee for uh, assisting us with the development of this plan. And that committee includes staff members, school safety personnel, parents, and community members. So the district-wide safety plan has quite a few components, uh, as you'll see if you take a look at the plan on the website. So uh, the first component is just identifying the purpose of the plan, the team members that are involved. Then uh, the second component looks at risk prevention and intervention. That's where a link to the code of conduct is, uh, different types of training, drills, and exercises that need to be conducted at each building, and uh, information about the local agencies. The third component is our emergency response information, how we communicate, what procedures are followed, and uh, how we coordinate with the local agencies. And then this fourth section touches upon what happens after the crisis happens, how do we recover from that crisis, where do we get support from, what are the procedures that need to be followed. And um, the fifth component, it talks about communicable disease. It does touch upon, we just went through the, the COVID pandemic, we're hopeful that we don't need to uh, look at this section of the plan, but it needs to be in there just in case. Annual emergency drills are held in all of our buildings. There needs to be 12 emergency drills each year. Four of them must be lockdown drills and eight evacuation drills or old-fashioned fire drills. Uh, eight of the drills have to be completed by December 31st of each year. And those first eight drills have to be a combination of lockdown drills and evacuation drills. So um, our students are, are quite familiar with these types of drills. Our staff are quite familiar, but we keep practicing so that if, uh, if there's a, an unfortunate crisis, everyone knows how to respond. So this public comment period will run through uh, September 18th, 2022. If you have any comments that you'd like to make regarding this plan, you can go onto the district clerk's page on the district website, and there's a link that you can just click on to submit those comments and um, the Board of Education will consider adoption of this plan at the September 22nd, 2022 meeting. Does anyone on the board have any questions? All right, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tona. On for our regular um, meeting agenda. Can I get a motion to accept the treasurer's report for May 2022, please? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And can I get a motion to accept the warrants for May of 22? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And a motion to accept the revenue status report for May of 2022, please. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Budget transfers for May of 22, please. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And finally, can I please get a motion to accept the minutes uh, for the June 16th, 2022 uh, meeting? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Ms. Tona, back to you. Thanks, Vice President Savino. So um, this is the last board meeting before the opening of school, so we're very excited about the new school year. Our first day for kindergartners, sixth graders, and ninth graders will be Tuesday, September 6th, and all students will be in on Wednesday, September 7th, 
That allows for a transition day for our uh, students entering buildings for the first time. So um, we're, we're very excited about giving those students the opportunity to have the building all to themselves so that they can really acclimate before the rest of their building mates arrive the next day. So um, information uh, from myself, from the building principals, will start to be delivered to families next week. So be on the lookout for that. Our district calendar is also being finalized and it should be on the website uh, soon, hopefully by the end of next week. Uh, I'd like to thank our buildings and ground staff for their work in readying all of our buildings, uh, especially, like was mentioned before, the added challenge of the construction work throughout the district. And thanks to all of our 12-month staff, uh, clericals, administrators, transportation department, summer is such a busy time in a school district. It's a time for our students and our 10-month employees to enjoy and relax and recharge but uh, the 12-month staff definitely works very hard to make sure that everything is ready for the opening of school. So thank you. We couldn't be ready without all of their efforts. Uh, fall sports practice begins next week, so I'm looking forward to seeing our student athletes out on the field. Hopefully the weather cooperates because we did have quite a few hot days, and uh, I understand that it got a little cooler out uh, in the past hour or so, so I'm hoping that continues for our athletes next week. Middle school orientation for sixth grade students is on Monday, August 22nd. And thank you to everyone who uh, participated in this month's uh, community connections right prior to this meeting. And the next meeting will be uh, at our September, uh, right before our September board meeting at 6 p.m. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tony. I'd like to turn it over to Trustee Martinez to read a donation. Board of Education hereby accepts a Special Olympics New York donation of $2,000 in funding to support the Unified Champion School activity in Unified Sports, inclusive youth leadership and whole school engagement. Can I please get a motion to accept the donation from the Special Olympics? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. I get a motion to accept the tonight's consent agenda. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have no resident comments, is that correct, Willie? Okay. So with that, uh, I want to thank everybody uh, again. Uh, it's hard to believe we're approaching a new school year. Uh, once again, so excited to see everybody back in the buildings, back on the fields. Uh, we're looking forward to a great year. Next month, our meeting will be back at the fall school. Uh, again, community connections will be at 6 o'clock. The meeting will be at 7 o'clock. Um, and that is all we have for tonight. Uh, we have some executive content uh, we need to discuss, uh, some legal matters. So can I get a motion to go into executive session, please? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone, for coming, and have a great night.